Welcome to the instruction video of XVivo's Kidney Assist Transport, a transportable system for hypothermic oxygenated machine perfusion of kidneys. When the cover is taken off, you will enter the compartment where the disposable cartridge is placed in the machine. Here you will find the pump motor, connectors for the pressure sensor and oxygen line, and the flow sensor. This is the temperature sensor, which automatically attaches to the reservoir in which the kidney is placed. At the top of the kidney assist transport is the area with controls and display. The display guides you through the setup procedure. The keys can be used to confirm and adjust settings. During setup and perfusion, the display will also provide actual information like perfusion parameters, such as flow, pressure, temperature, and resistance. If any of the parameters are out of set limits, the user will be warned by indicators, alarm messages, and an audible alarm. Behind the compartment door, the following components are accessible. Battery compartment, holder for an oxygen cylinder, oxygen connection with safety valve, oxygen flow indicator, storage space for sample tubes which can be used for cross-matching materials, access port for data retrieval and servicing. Behind the transparent window of the compartment door, you can store the organ identification documentation. At the bottom of the device, there are two vents for oxygen. These vents are used to release oxygen from the perfusion cartridge. This prevents accumulation of oxygen inside the device. Please assure that these vents are not blocked during use. At this side, you will find a receptacle for the external power supply, which allows you to run the machine on AC power. To run a perfusion procedure with the Kidney Assist Transport, you will need one disposable kit, one liter of certified machine perfusion solution, a compatible oxygen cylinder, crushed ice, and four fully charged batteries. Take four fully charged batteries off your charging dock. Check the charging status of each battery. Push the test button at the battery. Four illuminated LED indicators indicate that the battery is fully charged. Slide all four batteries into the battery compartment. After placing the batteries, close the compartment door. Alternatively, the supplied AC power adapter can be used to power the device. Connect the adapter to the port at the device. Connect the power plug to a reliable power source. Be advised to always leave one fully charged battery in the battery compartment to serve as a backup during any power failure or interruptions. To perform oxygenated perfusion, an oxygen source needs to be connected. Compatible oxygen bottles are specified in the instructions for use. Connect the oxygen cylinder to the supplied oxygen regulator. Ensure a leak-free connection. Open the valve of the cylinder for a few seconds to check if there is any leakage. Once you confirm there is no leakage, then securely strap the oxygen cylinder in its holder inside the compartment. Connect the oxygen tube to the connector. To prevent spillage of valuable oxygen, do not open the cylinder until the kidney is ready to be connected. Close the compartment door. On the outside of the disposable pack, you see the description, expiry date, and the gas tape. Never use a pack when it has expired or when the word gas is not visible. The disposable pack contains all major components to run a kidney perfusion. Before removing the perfusion cartridge from the tray, manually check if all connections are tight. Retighten when necessary. The cartridge includes a centrifugal pump head that pumps the perfusate through an oxygenator with built-in arterial filter. The oxygenator is used for active oxygenation to establish high oxygen tension in the perfusion fluid. This red port is used for de-airing of the built-in arterial filter. It also serves as sample port for perfusate. The pressure sensor is connected directly to part of the circuit, which leads towards the reservoir.
This silicone tube leads from the oxygenator towards the reservoir in which the kidney is stored and perfused. Perfusate drains passively from the kidney and is recirculated towards the pump. The disposable pack also contains the following items. Inner lid, outer lid, kidney holder, patch holders, cannulas, syringes, sterile caps. Remove the metal protection plate from the centrifugal pump. Place the perfusion cartridge in the device. The reservoir side first and then the oxygenator side. Connect the pump head to the magnetic pump coupling. Press down firmly until it is all the way down. Push the cartridge down until it is locked in position. Connect the pressure sensor cable. Connect the oxygen tubing. Push the silicone tubing into the flow sensor and push the lid to close the flow sensor. Unroll the filling line. Attach the spike to a bag or bottle with certified machine perfusion solution. Fill the system with one liter cold, below 10 degrees Celsius, machine perfusion solution. When filling is done, close the tubing clamp and place the filling line back into the intended holder. Power on the kidney assist transport device by pressing the power button continuously. During setup, guidance is shown on this display. In priming mode, de-air all tubing, pump head, oxygenator, and pressure sensor. Remove the yellow cap of the de-airing membrane of the oxygenator. To remove air bubbles from the centrifugal pump, stop the pump manually by pushing the pump button. In most situations, bubbles will automatically flow up. Remove bubbles manually when needed. Restart the pump and increase pump output by pushing the up button at the control panel. During priming, the pump output can remain at about 50%. De-air the oxygenator via the red sampling valve by using a syringe. Aspirate with the valve in position 1 until no more bubbles come out. The same for position 2. After de-airing, replace the red valve in horizontal position. Replace cap. Check if the pressure valve is in horizontal position. Pull the blue tab until a few drops of perfusate come out. Open the flow sensor to check the tubing for air bubbles. If necessary, squeeze the tube to remove the air bubbles. Replace yellow cap after de-airing. Press OK to proceed to the next step. Fill both ice reservoirs entirely with crushed ice. Make sure to press the ice thoroughly into the reservoir to ensure that maximum ice volume is filled. Close both reservoirs with their corresponding lid. Place the ice reservoirs next to the perfusion reservoir in which the kidney will be placed to ensure sufficient cooling. Close the perfusion compartment with the device cover to keep the interior cold. When the system is sufficiently cooled, it will automatically proceed to the next step. The system will automatically calibrate the pressure sensor. The pump stops while pressure is being zeroed in 8 seconds. After zeroing, the system will automatically proceed to the next step. Set the preferred perfusion pressure. Recommended pressure setting of 25 millimeters mercury is default. Press the OK button to confirm and to proceed to the final step. The display will show Connect Kidney. Do not confirm this step by pressing OK until the kidney is placed and the reservoir is closed with two lids. Prepare the donor kidney under sterile conditions. 
open the sterile packaging of the kidney holder. Prepare a suitable aortic patch. Remove the sterile packaging of the patch holder. Pull the aortic patch gently through the opening of the patch holder. Position the patch symmetrically over the soft material of the patch holder. When needed, fix the corners of the patch to the soft material with a suitable suture. Make sure the renal artery is not twisted. Fold the patch holder to close it. Keep the patch holder closed. In case no aortic patch is present, use the straight cannula with artificial patch available in 3 and 5 mm diameter. Secure the cannula in the renal artery with a ligature. Position the kidney on the flexible net of the kidney holder. Push the patch holder in the cassette. Push until it is all the way down to ensure the renal artery is not twisted or kinked. Ensure the ureter is placed nicely around the kidney or outside of the kidney holder. The cassette can be moved up or down to adjust for the length of the artery. Close the kidney holder by folding the two parts together until the locks click. Check the connection of the kidney by using the 10cc Monoject syringe. Aspirate some perfusion or preservation solution and inject into the cup at the bottom of the kidney holder. Repeat two or three times and ensure that the connection with the patch is leakage free. In case of any leaks, try to resolve these before placing the kidney in the perfusion reservoir. The kidney is now ready for perfusion. Do not forget to open the oxygen cylinder to ensure oxygenated perfusion. Create a sterile field by aseptically unfolding the drape located at the top of the reservoir. Take the outer corners of the first layer and pull up to see in which direction it needs to be unfolded. The other layer will cover the other side of the machine. Aseptically place the kidney holder with kidney into the reservoir. Push until perfusion solution reaches the de-airing valve. Close the reservoir with the two separately packed sterile lids. First, place the inner lid and then the outer lid. Fold the lock around the edge of the reservoir to lock the outer lid of the reservoir. Press OK to start the pressure-controlled perfusion. Wait for one to two minutes until the machine has established a stable perfusion. In case of any error, revert to the instructions for use for troubleshooting. There is also a 24-7 help desk available. When a stable, uninterrupted perfusion is established, the sterile drape can be torn away from the reservoir. Dispose it as biohazardous material. Slide the cover on the device. Press both parts firmly together and make sure the lock of the cover is closed completely until the click. During perfusion, the measured values of flow, temperature, pressure, and vascular resistance will appear on the display. During perfusion, the pressure setting can be adjusted by pressing the OK button. Be aware that after three minutes, the keys of the control panel will be locked to prevent accidental activation. To unlock, press OK for three seconds and the keys will be activated again. Use the up and down buttons until the preferred value appears on the display. Confirm by pushing the OK button. Sampling of the perfusion fluid is performed via the sample port by using a syringe. Take off the cap. Connect a sterile lure lock syringe. 
open the three-way valve. Take a perfusate sample by aspirating. Close the three-way valve. Disconnect the syringe. Replace the cap on the sample port. After sampling, ensure that the valve is in the horizontal position. Open the compartment door to insert organ identification documentation. Before transporting the kidney assist transport, make sure there are four fully charged batteries in the system and the lock on the cover is closed. Lift the device by grabbing the incorporated carrying handles at the bottom of the device. Place the device on a hard, horizontal, and stable surface during transport. For example, the trunk of a car. Avoid blocking of the oxygen vents at the bottom of the kidney assist transport. Switch off the pump by pressing the pump on-off button. Switch off the kidney assist transport by pressing the power button. Remove the cover of the perfusion compartment. Remove the ice reservoirs. Open the reservoir with due consideration of the sterile contents by removing both lids. Take the kidney holder out of the reservoir. Open the kidney holder and remove the kidney. Close the perfusion reservoir with the two lids before removing the used perfusion cartridge. Remove the used perfusion cartridge. Discard the used perfusion cartridge as medical grade waste following local regulations. Open the compartment door to the oxygen and battery compartment by gently pressing on the top of the compartment door. Remove power supply, batteries, oxygen cylinder, and sample holders and close the compartment. Take the oxygen cylinder, close it, and disconnect the flow regulator. The flow regulator should be cleaned and reused. Contact your oxygen supplier to refill the cylinder. Place the batteries on the supplied charger to recharge for next use. Remove the oxygen drain insert. Remove ice and water from the ice reservoirs and dry with a lint-free cloth. Clean the surfaces of the device including the cover, ice reservoirs, and oxygen drain with a prescribed cleaning product. Do not use any abrasives as this will damage the surface of the device. Disinfect the clean surfaces with an unused, lint-free cloth with a prescribed disinfection product. Visually inspect for damage or deterioration of the surfaces. In case of doubt about functionality or cleanability, consult Exvivo. Your kidney assist transport is now ready for storage until the next perfusion run.